What is up, Earth peeps and Moon peeps? I am just a simple new type. And in this episode, we are returning to the correct century and turn a Gundam. Last time, Will Game wanted to go to the moon so badly that he joined the Diana counter with his cannon, Ilifuto. However, he went up against Louisiana's militia and was taken down by the Suicide Squad. In this episode, Kihil will give a speech pretending to be Diana. Also, an old woman will refuse to get off her land as the battle wages on. So let's get into this. Lauren and Gwen wonder who were the men who attempted to assassinate the Queen. Gwen notes that the Diana counter doesn't seem to be as organized as he thought. They get an invitation to see the Queen's ceremony. The Moon Race wants to establish a fiefdom in the Sunbelt Zone. However, this invitation isn't for Lauren, it is for Laura. It's time to cross-dress once again. While Diana, as Kihil, is starting to feel uneasy about tomorrow, so too is Kihil, as Diana, nervous about making the speech. She decides to finally let Lauren know who she really is. After she tells him, he is upset with himself for not realizing that the two have switched places. Diana no longer wants Kihil to go through the pain of having to deal with running the moon race. She needs Lauren's help. The southern city is prepping for the big event for the moon race. Teteth is scheming in the background. Lauren is now cosplaying as Laura and is in turn a Gundam. He notes that Kihel has even learned how to forge Diana's signature as it is spot on. Harry tells Diana that just because they declared a fiefdom in the Sunbelt Zone doesn't mean that the citizens will allow it, which is why forces are being pushed towards the border. It is clear that this declaration of fiefdom is just to get their claws on some land and then use it to their advantage. The Moon Race plans on expanding its empire. Harry tells her that their parents went to cryo in the hopes that his family will one day be able to live on Earth. They were poor, so they can only afford the basic cryo. Because of this, Harry's father didn't survive the cryo process. Everyone is starting to arrive to the declaration of fiefdom. Laura and Diana head towards the Soleil. She is able to convince the guards that she is the real Diana and sneaks onto the ship. Teteth starts getting some of the Moonrace soldiers drunk. She is continuing her assassination plans on the Queen. She is able to get one of the men drunk and steals his uniform. A few militia members begin attacking the event. One makes a wad go out of control. Poe goes and stops it from hurting citizens. Citizens. Sochi yells at Gwen about the attack, but he reminds her that he has no power with the militia anymore. A sumo heads out and attacks the Borjarnon, but it is a fake. Meanwhile, Teteth finds Kihil as Diana and points a gun at her. She shoots and misses every shot? Based on how well she is wielding a knife in the next scene, she shouldn't have missed any of those shots and Kiho should be dead. Gavin Guni and his team is able to take down a sumo. Harry comes running in. Teteth throws a smoke grenade and bails. The Queen tells Harry to ignore this and go to announce the declaration. Laura and Diana go to talk to Kihil. It seems that like Kihil is going to make the speech. Diana wishes her luck. Everyone listens in as she gives her speech. She expresses desire for peace amongst everyone. Diana says that Kihil expressed her own desires better than she ever could. She announces that she won't go forth with the fiefdom and begin negotiations once again. After the announcement and after taking down the sumo, Gavin thinks they could take down the moon race. The militia's morale is very high as the moon race begins to decline. They are still digging the spaceship out of the mountains, but in the process of digging, they find a second craft. They find a gallop. The gallop is a land-based hovercraft from Universal Century. It was used by Ramba Rao and his crew. This ship has twin machine guns. In the back, it usually has another gun, but this version does not. This version of the Gallop is also significantly smaller. Diana has been inspired by Kihil's speech, so she washes Lauren's underwear. Mmm, Sisyphusian empowerment. Keep rolling that boulder up that hill. Lauren and the team finally have a Moonrace mechanic to help them with fixing turn A. He tells Lauren of the self-repairing nanomachines that the mobile suit is covered in. This is called Nanoskin, or Nano Surface Kinetic Improvement Nervation, which I think is only mentioned in the Memory of First Wind art book, which is actually available on archive.org if you google it. It is in Japanese though, so good luck. The mechanic mentions that the units like the Wodom also have nanoskin, but he mentions that he has never seen it on this level before. It seems that turn A can completely heal if all nanomachines are still intact. He also mentions that there is a legend amongst the moon race of a power machine called the Gundam that could destroy the entire world. The team decides to make Lauren the captain of the Gallop. Meanwhile, Harry informs Kihil as Diana that some of her men, including those who align with Agrippa Maintainer, are seeking to expand their territory on Earth regardless of her announcement. Remember, he is the moon race chancellor and was responsible for sending Coronander down to Earth. 
Even Harry says to her that their people have waited thousands of years for this moment. He isn't on board with her plan. However, he swore allegiance to her and will protect her no matter what. Phil Ackman and Poe mention that some of their mechanics have defected and they are starting to lose ground. Sochi meets with Diana and Lauren. She wants Lauren to use the gallop on the front lines with the militia, but Diana trusts Lauren to make the right choice. Phil, Poe, and one redshirt approach the gallop in Wodoms. The gallop team notices. Sochi wants to go out in her capool but Lauren wants to escape. She heads out to fight the moon race. Lauren gets in turn A and heads to the back of the gallop to reattach its head. He fumbles around trying to attach his head. Once it's attached, Lauren does a sweet shoulder throw on one of the Wodoms. The gallop team is trying to get their twin cannon turrets up and running. Phil is attacking Sochi. As Poe goes to attack Lauren, she detaches her head unit. The gallop fires the turrets, but she is able to take one out. Lauren uses his beam saber to attack Poe's feet. He completely ignores her and runs towards Phil attacking Sochi. He slices through the Wodom's arm and instantly grabs Sochi and runs away. Phil and Poe make their retreat. Sochi is upset that she needed saving. Meanwhile, Poe loses another battle and cries about it. When they get back to the gallop, they learn that two people were killed by Poe's attack on the turret. Sochi apologizes to Lauren and says that it is her fault that she got people killed today. Mm, kind of. The title of the next episode is called Anus Power. Wait, wait, wait. I read that wrong. Anise's Power. Anyone else do a double take on this? one, an old woman yells at the birds in the sky. These birds happen to be the militia in hip heavies carrying bombs. They do a bombing run on a flat. There really isn't anything to say about the hip heavy or the bull ones for that matter, as they are both early 20th century inspired airplanes. But I do like the inverse design where the propeller is in the back and the wings are shifted more towards the back as well. The Suicide Squad comes in and picks up the pieces. One of Gavin's men goes to search for the flat. One pops up out of the ground and destroys the Borjarnons. Gavin goes in but is unable to get past its shield. Suddenly more flats start coming out of the ground. Back on the gallop, Lauren is worried about Sochi and the Kapool going out without turning but Lauderum says that Miyashe will be with her. Lauderum is Miyashe's dad and also a part of the Gallop crew. He's always in the background giving positive vibes. He's the positive vibes guy. They are concerned about some farmland in between them and the battlefield. On this farmland, we see Jacob and Bruno working. Wait, pause and enhance. Yeah, that donkey definitely bit him. Lauren in turn A approaches the house. An old woman named Anise Bell comes out and starts attacking turn A with a pitchfork. Bruno and Jacob watch. Wait, zoom and enhance. Yeah, maybe stop going near the donkey. Just a thought. Lauren decides to teabag the old lady. She is mad that all the mechanical dolls are running her land. Lauren mentions that she is the only one that hasn't evacuated the area. This is her ancestors' land, and she refuses to run away, just like her ancestors. The Kapools meet up with the Suicide Squad with a new weapon from Gwyn. It is an explosive that Moonrace technicians manufacture. They douse the area with a bunch of explosives. As the flats approach them, they fire, and the explosives go up in flames. However, even this isn't enough for the flats. Meanwhile, back on the farm. Wait a minute, go back. Was that a Star Wars wipe? Bless your heart, turn a Gundam. Lauren is trying to help her while also trying to convince her that this area isn't safe. Diana comes to meet with Lauren. Jacob and Bruno think that this is Diana at first, not realizing that it actually is her. We learn that Anise is actually the grandmother of Verlaine de Bond, who is the daughter of the baker who Keith is currently helping out. She is informed that they went out to the Sunbelt Zone to sell their bread. Suddenly, bombs drop around Anise's farm. On the battlefield, a flat and walking dumpling approaches. This is Cancer Kafka and Muran Muran. These two look like they stepped out of the 70s. We will learn that these two are a part of the moon race, but have been on Earth since the days before Diana cryoed herself. Muran Muran transforms the flat into drop mode, which is the first time I believe we've seen this transformation, unless I missed it in the first episode. His flat goes in and wrecks Miyashe. Sochi calls out for her, but they get no response. Lauren comes in and helps the militia. In the background, Bruno and Jacob are plotting to steal the gallop. The battle gets closer to the farm. Anise smacks that ass and says, this is my land. Turn A jumps on top of Muran's flat and tells them that he will destroy them if they don't retreat immediately. Cancer and her walking dumpling realizes Lauren knows the weak spots of the flat. She realizes he is Moonrace. Cancer and Muran retreat for now. They take Miyashe to the farm and tend to her wounds. Sochi once again is upset with herself for getting her friend injured. Gavin's team heads back to the front lines of the battle. Anise finally agrees to retreat, but not before smacking that ass one more time. She heads off to find her family. Because Lauren knows Keith, he is confident that everything will be fine.
And that will do it for this episode. I struggle to get through this part of the series, I'm not gonna lie. My biggest complaint is that there's so much dicking around from the time that they discover the spaceship to the time that they actually head out into space. There are some amazing character moments with Diana, but ultimately not worth it for the dicking around. Luckily, we have one more video before we head out into space. We will see Bruno and Jacob join the Gallup team. Also, Tete will continue her assassination attempt on Diana. But that will do it for now, Moon Peeps. Remember, when ranting about your land, be sure to smack that ass. Peace.